after the successful launch of the world's most advanced earth monitoring satellite NISAR in July. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All L40 engines generating nominal thrust. S139 motor ignited. On November 2nd, India prepares to open a new chapter in space-based defence dominance. India is all set to launch LMV-3 heavy lift rocket, which carries the CMS-03 satellite, the most advanced military communication satellite India has ever built. This uh, GSAT-7 is a multi-band uh, communication satellite in 36,000 kilometer orbit. Uh, when you say multi-band, it has uh, uh, you know, band for uh, you know voice communication. It has band for video communication. It was uh, band for uh, inter uh, uh, satellite communication applications. Uh, it has C band, uh, KU band, uh, S yes band, and as well as uh, the uh, amateur band of VHF. All the four bands are called as the uh, multispectral and uh, uh, satellite. And this satellite had been used for communication in uh, the ships. Uh, between the ships in terms of voice communication, video communication and also the navigation uh, purposes. This had been uh, the backbone of Indian uh, Navy as it has been claimed uh, by ISRO and this is a user specific satellite which has served its purpose. Funded by the Ministry of Defence, this seven year mission will give India's Navy and Tri Forces unmatched connectivity encrypted networks and maritime eyes that will never blink. Designed as the successor for GSAT-7 Rukmani, CMS-03 expands communication coverage from the Arabian Sea to the Indo-Pacific, linking surface ships, submarines and aircraft under one secure digital web. Experts call it the brainstem of India's maritime grid. The CMS uh, the combat management system. It has been developed by the Indian naval scientists who work at the behest of uh, the research and development organization that is DRDO. And its short name is VESI. It has been developed by our own scientists and it has been in works for a long time because the weapon systems are changing and therefore the data which are handled and required uh, to be controlled, they also keep changing. So as a result, the, uh, you know, the uh, CMS also changes. So because of the new weapon systems, new radar, which are becoming more and more indigenous, the ballistic data, you know, the control data, all that keeps changing, which are scientists only, convert it into algorithms. It is fed into the CMS and our own system is capable of uh, you know, uh, engaging the weapons, engaging the target. Now the second big advantage is because it is our own system, we shall not be, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of susceptible to jamming. So it will be on our own. Operation Sindur has proved that satellites aren't passive observers. They are force multipliers during the conflict. Israel's satellites work 24-7 during Operation Sindur to guide aircraft radar and tactical units in precision coordination over both land and sea. Uh, specifically when it comes to uh, the Operation Sindur type of uh, uh, you know, a mission where uh, the satellites and the space related assets have played a major role in terms of uh, successful execution of various, uh, you know, various parameters and the targets for uh, the uh, Army, Navy and the Air Force. Uh, in such uh, applications, there are about 53 satellites which are in orbit, which are operational by, uh, by ISRO and which is uh, the assets of the country and at least about 25 to 26 uh, satellites have been operational in terms of supporting uh, the Indian strategic sector. With CMS-03, India extends that success to the seas. Its geostationary network would plug into Indian Navy's NAVIC and DRDO defence data grids, creating a secure inter-service digital ecosystem, from command rooms 
Bulgaria Groups. Op Sindur has taught many lessons and therefore I don't wish to go into detail. But use of satellite communication, uh, you know the we have uh, our own satellite system called the Navik, which is a navigation satellite and it is good enough, uh, you know, for the Indian Ocean region and Indo-Pacific. At the moment, all satellites are not up, but you require just about four, three to four satellites to get a proper position. And Navik system was used by the armed forces to guide the BrahMos missile onto the target. So, uh, as you know that uh, you know they were had a window of 23 minutes. In those 23 minutes, basically the airborne early warning aircraft was airborne, and it has successfully jammed. Uh, all the radars, the air defense radars uh, on those nine, uh, you know, airfields on which the attack was carried out. Also, as you know, that the air defense system of uh, Lahore uh, was actually destroyed and therefore Lahore and Karachi were out of uh, loop. So, I would say that the biggest lesson, lesson is that we must rely more on satellite communication, more on satellite navigation. But for that, the, the DRDO, the ISRO, they will have to work absolutely hand in hand. CMS-03 also marks India's entry into a very small global elite. Only few nations have operational military communication satellites of this scale. European Union has its own satellite communication. The Japanese have its own satellite communication. They have hired satellite channels with, from the US or maybe from European Union and we have our own satellite channel. What is unique is that you cannot interfere with this uh, data because we have our own codes, we have our own satellite and the frequencies are known only to us on which, we, which is being down downloaded. So that is one. But second point is, very important point is that you know the uh, uh, satellites can be shot down and all these communication satellites, the the, you know the position of them is known to the whole world and uh, though there is a treaty that communication satellites will not be destroyed but one doesn't know what will happen in the war time uh, and therefore there are alternate methods uh, there are two three more satellites in which very similar antennas have been given some of them are also being used by the army now and some are being used by the air force so Primarily, naval requirement was more because the Navy operates away from its borders quite far into the sea. Backed by 52 planned ISR communication satellites by 2026, under the Space Based Surveillance 3 initiative, CMS-03 is just the beginning of a connected defence sky. From the depths of the ocean to the silence of the space, India now sees all commands all and protects all because in the new age of warfare India's sky is no longer the limit it is our shield 5 4 3 2 1 0 all L-40 engines generating nominal thrust S-139 motor ignited 